Okay, let's, let's get going. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for attending uh, this webinar this evening around about uh, around physical activity and, and exercise. Um, really good to see so many on the call. I'm joined tonight with um, my panelists of experts uh, that we're going to go around and um, shortly have a little bit of an introduction from. Just from myself, I'm Anna Castillo. I'm the physical activity delivery manager for Parkinson's UK. Um, and tonight I'm going to be asking the questions to our wonderful panelists. Um, as we go around, we will be, be doing that. There is a question and answer. We will try to answer as many questions as possible, um, but we may not be able to answer all of them, uh, but we will follow up with, with answers after this evening. Um, just a little bit of um, housekeeping. We can't advise individuals on on, cert, on, indiv on issues that are um, particular to you. Um, this is around about exercise and physical activity as a whole and that's what we want to talk about um, and we're going to have that um, this evening answer those questions that have come in we will try and answer as many as possible um, so all I'm going to do now is introduce the panelists Maria could you introduce yourself please yes certainly hello well thank you so much for inviting me my name is Maria Lewis I am a physiotherapist um, that specializes in Parkinson's and I'm also co-founder of Reach Your Peak, which is an online exercise platform community for people with Parkinson's in the UK. Fantastic, thank you. And next on my screen is Jagdeep. Um, good um, evening, everyone. And thank you for joining. Um, my name is Jagdeep Arjuna. Um, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2021. Um, I've opened a boxing club called Dopamine Warriors. It's coming up to two years since it's been running. And that's me. So, cheers. Thank you. Uh, Rose, please. Hi, my name is Rose Donaldson. Uh, I'm living in Scotland and um, I'm a person with Parkinson's. And I just on the panel to give my kind of view on exercise. Fantastic. Thank you. And Vicky. Hello, my name is Vicky Reese davis I'm so delighted to be here uh, this evening and um, I am a personal trainer and fitness instructor and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's three years ago. My mother and grandmother had Parkinson's so hopefully I've got a good insight into what you're maybe going through. I do a lot of work with Maria, um, Reach Your Peak and um, yeah, here to help in any way I can. Fantastic. So that is our fantastic panel. And as you can see, we've got a lot of experience here, both people living with, with Parkinson's, but also expertise of the on the physio side of things. So I'm just going to dive straight in. Um, Maria, um, a lot of questions that have come through is around about what physical activity is best, what exercise is best, what are the recommended guidelines and kind of what are the significant outcomes for, for hitting these guidelines? Yeah. Okay, gosh, let's start with a light, light topic, shall we? <laughs> Straight in there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start by saying the best exercise for you is the exercise that you're going to do. Um, that's what's key, something that you're going to enjoy, that you're going to stick at for the long haul, because that's what we're asking of you. Um, but underpinning all that, um, I'm going to really emphasized this evening that when we exercise with Parkinson's, we are exercising your brain. And that's what you need to understand. It just so happens that you'll get fitter, you'll get stronger, you become more flexible, um, you know, your balance will improve. These are all happy side effects of the medicine that is exercise. But when we are focused on exercising for Parkinson's, we're exercising your brain and we're driving changes in the brain that um, allow for you to be able to control your symptoms. And that's the main thing that we're looking at and we're focused on when we're exercising for our Parkinson's. Um, what else did you want me to go? <laughs> yes, I know I threw everything at you there. Um, just what are the kind of recommended guidelines for yeah. somebody living with Parkinson's? Okay, so so there are recommended guidelines. Um, Parkinson's UK have the recommended gui guidelines and also the American Association of, um, Physical, um, of Physical Therapy have recommended published guidelines. Now these are our guidelines and that's what I'm gonna say before I start 
throwing this at you. What we say right from the outside, it, outset is something is better than nothing for all of you when you're trying to start and establish an exercise um, routine. But there are evidence-based guidelines and these are based on the research that we've had looking at what you should be doing. And the recommended guidelines currently are 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic exercise each week. Now that can be broken down into as little as 10 minute sections of exercise but what the recommendations say is generally it's around 30 minutes of exercise so frequency is is as important as the overall dose of your exercise so you're looking really ideally to to work at least three times a week on aerobic based type exercise where you're getting a bit hot getting a bit sweaty starting to feel like you're slightly out of breath and slightly uncomfortable. That's your starting point when you're starting with the aerobic side of, of the prescription. But on top of the aerobic part of the prescription, there's also um, strengthening. Strengthening is really important and Vicky is here as our strengthening expert, so she's going to touch far more on that. But all I'm going to say is the recommended prescription suggests that you should be exercising two to three times a week on non-consecutive days looking at strengthening all the major muscle groups. Also stretch and mobility is important and at Reach Repeat we always say it's important because because the dose of aerobic exercise and strengthening is, is high we need you to prevent prevent you from um, developing any injury. So, so stretch and mobility is really important from that respect but also lots of people we work with um, have a lot of pain as a result of rigidity in Parkinson's and therefore stretch is really important as part of that. The recommended prescription tells us, dose tells us that we should be doing that two to three times a week but ideally when the people we work with and, and what we recommend is that your stretch should be incorporated um, into sort of a daily sort of um, routine that, that you can do. Um, and then the final um, part of that prescription, that huge prescription that we have from the evidence is balance, agility and multitasking and again you should be doing activities that challenge your balance. Things like dance, tai chi, whatever that might be, gardening, you know we, we're going to talk about activities as well as not necessarily exercise, we talked about, we started, Anna started with physical activities, there are activities that you can do that will challenge um, your, uh, that can allow you to work at these, the, these doses. So we're going to bring that in as well as talking about just particularly exercise. So again, multitasking is something that people with Parkinson's really struggle with. You can train for that. So you need to, to look at tasks, sports, activities that are really challenging your ability to multitask and, and are challenging your balance. And again, that's two to three times a week. So it's daunting. I'm going to say that and I'm sure the rest of my panel that are here with me will agree. This seems really daunting, but it's it's about where we start, what we start with. And I'm going to go back to where I started, which is that you've got to do something that you enjoy and you've got to do something that you think you're going to be able to stick at. Um, and that's probably a good starting place. Fantastic. Thank you, Maria. Yes, we, we do recognise that it is daunting, but just something is better than nothing and building on, on that, which we will actually go into further down in the webinar is about building those those habits and how we can work it into our, our daily lives because we all are very busy. Um, on that, um, Maria, sorry, just coming back to you again, is that you were just talking about being active and you were talking about kind of targeted exercise for Parkinson's. Could you just kind of tell us a little bit more about that, the difference between that being active and the more targeted exercise and, and why we do that. Um, you kind of touched on yeah. it with rigidity and things. Yeah, so, 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 when, we, so when we exercise, uh, whenever we meet anyone, um, so at, at sort of reach of people, what we want to establish is what are their main problems? So what are their main symptoms and, um, and what is 
really problematic in their life because that's a really good starting point when we're looking at exercise prescription and, and, and trying to find something that's going to actually work for them. But the evidence definitely tells us that in order to do well at physical activity and enjoy your gardening and your walking, there has to be some structured um, structured activity and exercise in order to drive those neuroplastic changes. So I think I think the way often that we like to package it to try and make it a bit more palatable is that in order to continue um, your activities, the things you enjoy, think about ring fencing time to actually do some targeted structured exercise that meets your prescription because what you'll find is that when you start to do that and and that is a scheduled um activity exercise in your weekly um in your life then what you'll find is that that you'll have that carryover of better motor symptoms you know you, it will improve your rigidity it will improve your tremor it will improve your bradykinesia and it's it's those changes that we're after it's those changes that the the structured targeted exercise will give you that will allow you to enjoy the activities that you do um more um, I don't know if anybody else wants to add into that. I think Rose, maybe you've got something. Um, yeah, I suppose um, when you think about uh, how many symptoms there are in uh, Parkinson's, you know, um, everybody's got something different to, to exercise. So I think uh, concentrate on uh, your particular uh, weak part. You know, if it's your right shoulder or your right arm, or you know, do sort of an extra, extra strength and put the extra intent into that sort of area. I would say. Yeah. Definitely. And, and on that note as well, I want to um, also explain about how maybe just touch slightly on, on when we talk about targeted exercise, we, we, we teach about elements that make exercise Parkinson specific. Um, and, and Rose, when you mentioned about intent with exercise, I think that's really key. So there are three key elements that really we focus on. And I think it's, it's uniform across anybody I know who's physiotherapists or, or exercise professionals who teach people Parkinson specific exercise. We talk about power, which is maximal effort through purposeful movement. So that moving with intent, we talk about accuracy. So, so precise precision in your movement, think about your accuracy be aware, be mindful in your movement, be aware of, of where your limbs are in space and be, be um, mindful of ensuring the symmetry in your movement, you know, so, so that you've got to be thinking your exercise. And then the final bit is amplitude, is, is the size of movement. What we find in Parkinson's is that you get this recalibration of the brain and everything come, becomes much, much smaller. And in order to, to help, recalibrate that and, and to change make those changes we need to think about things being big as we move so so those three key elements help us for help the, the exercise that we do become far more mindful it's got to be a a thinking modality that makes you sweat you know that's something we we use a lot at Rachel Peak so it's you've got to be in the in the moment so for instance just getting on a treadmill and just if that's something you've always done all your life and just getting back on that treadmill and just running yes you'll get an element of the aerobic intensity but you're you're missing half the prescription because you know you've got to, it's got to be mindful it's got you've got to be thinking there's got to be a cognitive load to that exercise that you do so again make sure that you're you're bearing that in mind when you're thinking about the type of exercise that you want to be doing Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this is a question that has um, just cropped up in our question and answer, but also it is something that's been submitted uh, previously as well. And I think it's something that the, the people on the panel will will know about. Um, but Rose, I'm just going to ask you this to begin with. Um, when I'm feeling unwell most of the time and sometimes having to cope with no sleep and having trouble with walking, also adding in medication to, to that and issues with medication, how do you manage to kind of still get up and be active and do that that exercise that Marie has just been talking about? How can you how do you balance that fatigue versus activity? Yeah, well, it can be quite hard, really. 
I think, first of all, um, if you're feeling like that and you haven't maybe exercised in a while, I'd kind of do a reset, you know, um, check that I'm taking my medication on time, um, what medication I'm taking, I look at the brands, uh, am I drinking plenty of water? Um, and with the sleep, obviously, that's a, that's a problem with most people with Parkinson's. So uh, before I exercise, I usually take my medication about 45 minutes before because I need the medication to exercise and the exercise helps, you know, keep me on a low dose of med medication. And um, also don't um, don't always think of exercise as like the big one hour of pushing, shoving, lifting weights and things like that. And, um, you know, if you're on the couch and you're feeling, you know, tired, roll your ankles, roll your wrists, you know, maybe lift your legs. And um, then because there's times, you know, I'm flat out and I just think, oh, I have an exercise. So I just do something small. And also try and think of exercise as the one more thing you do every day. So, you know, say you're in a bad way and you're getting up to go to make a cup of tea, you know, get up off the couch or do it twice, you know, walk up the stairs twice, uh, do it three times, you know. So think of exercise as doing things one more than you've done, you know, any other day. Um, and don't berate yourself, you know, because uh, that's going to get you down. You're going to be less motivated. So just try a little at a time is, would be my advice, you know. Definitely. Thank you. Yes, Rosa, just like what you, you picked up on there. Don't berate yourself. I think it's one of those of, of kind of it, it, it celebrate the achievements. If you've just felt really unwell that day and you've moved, great. Well done. Um, I think you've got to celebrate, to celebrate that. that. Yes. yes. Uh, Jagdeep. Yeah. Um, just to add on to what Rose said, um, I think there's been many a time of someone like me who's been exercising all my life that I feel, yeah, I'm a bit fatigued in. But sometimes I find when I start uh, like a five-minute session, that actually changes my mood and then it goes on to 30, 40 minutes. So um, sometimes just doing a bit might actually change your mood and um, just give it a go. By everything Rose says, um, you can pretty much do exercises on the chair, just moving around in your arms and, and um, so, um, but yeah, but yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Fantastic. Thank you, Jagdeep. Vicky, have you got anything that you'd like to add? I mean, I think I'd uh, concur with Rose and Jagdeep um, in that I'm a fitness instructor with Parkinson's. I do not jump out of bed and go, woohoo. I roll out of bed and go, oh. But I promise everyone here today that if you start, like Jack do said, just do five minutes, it will lead to 10 minutes. It is so incredible exercise. The, the power that it gives you, it will make you feel better. And I think turning on some music, getting a beat going can, can often help as well. So get your favorite tunes on. Um, and I promise you, you that you will never feel worse at the end. Um, uh, you know, you can sue me for saying that, but I, but I do believe that. Um, you will never feel worse at the end of it. It will just, so just try a teeny bit. It's tiny steps, tiny steps. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, I think also as well is that um, sometimes the power of even just getting some fresh air, not, you yeah. know, just getting out and getting that fresh air can really be a mood changer as well, isn't it? So thinking about maybe, yeah, you might not be able to go to your exercise class, but could you go for a little walk or something? Is that kind of what you would recommend as well? Like, yeah, I'm seeing some nods. So yeah, Maria. <laughs> I'd say yeah, so it's trying to do things that you enjoy. It might be gardening. It might be going for a little walk. It might be, you know, in that walk doing your normal pace and maybe upping the pace just for 10 seconds and then going back to normal um just finding joy in you know the things you love fantastic <clears throat> okay so we'll move on to the next question um Jagdeep um this is for somebody who is actually really quite active who's who's asking this question so they are um doing four or five sessions a week. Um, they, they're doing some PD sessions, boxer size, stretch classes. Um, but according to uh, Christy Meldrum's book, um, it's suggesting about exercise needs to be more structured. So how do you go about ensuring that one hour training session is of maximum bef benefit? Um, and, and, you know, this person still needs to work office hours. So it's about how working it into that day. 
Yeah, um, so I'm a great fan of um, Christine. I think I think I bought a book a couple of weeks after it was released. So um, um, everything she says in there is um, spot on sort of thing. And um, um, yeah, so just coming back what Maria said in the beginning about which um, exercises you should be doing. And there's no, like, if it's a aerobic exercise, you don't just have to do aerobic. Like what I do in my boxing class, I just mix everything. So it's um, got the RMTI, which is resistance training with balance. And um, so you do um, the um, coordination work. And uh, myself, I'm in full-time work, so I have to work around my office hours uh, as well. Um, but... Just coming back to um, I think the question is um, that I would just say um, what Christine is more focusing is saying that she's made a concept which she calls cocktails, and um, in them that cocktail is like a drink. You can put different bits in them that drink, whether it's flexibility or um, um, strength training, and just trying to stick to that regime. And um, but once again, it's got to be something that you enjoy because don't forget, this is for on the long haul. This isn't for one year. This isn't for one day. This is going to be the whole rest rest of our lives. We have to keep exercising as best we can. And um, then on top of that, she's really um, quite um, um, adamant on getting up your heart and rate to 80 80 percent to 85 percent to make them the real difference so in my class when i say to my fellow parties i say yeah you've got to get your heart rate up to 80 to 85 percent they sort of sigh and say wow but what you've got to understand for somebody who's super fit it's more difficult for that person to get their heart rate to 80 to 85 percent than somebody who doesn't exercise regularly. So it could be just pushing their arms out strongly, punching the bag fast or hard. And um, so that can easily pick up their heart rate. So um, the only thing is that we have to keep that frequency and the longevity of that going on and on. And um, if anybody wants to know different ways to measure their heart and rates, there's a couple of formulas out um, there that um, I can easily post in the message box. But um, probably the one I prefer is um, the Tanaka formula, which is um, like 208 minus um, 0 0.7 times your age. And that gives you a more like a sort of closer figure to what your max heart rate should is. And um, then you just get 80 to 85 percent off of that and i hope that sort of answers your questions i think maria wants to come in yeah thanks jagby yeah that's brilliant um great advice yeah exercise intensity is um something that is worth measuring i guess you know in order to know if you're aerobic intensity so yeah so the the carbonum formula will work and also rate of perceived exertion which is much easier for a lot of ours that are on the move all the time and that's just how you feel so at the beginning i said you know really an indication that you're working hard enough is that you're hot oh my god all right <laughs> all right maria it's okay <laughs> sorry and, and i swore look at that um let me get you back hang on a second <laughs> Sorry, that was my father. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> You know, it always rings at a great time. So sorry, everybody. Yeah, what we were saying was that, yeah, so you rate of perceived exertion, you've got to be hot, you've got to be sweaty, you've got to be out of breath, breathless. Um, and, um, and that's, the, uh, and as long as you're hitting that, if you're starting to feel like that, you're round, round about in that right area. The other thing I just wanted to say was, you know, uh, lots of activities that we do, lots of sport that we do, 
have of lots of elements of that prescription in. So, for instance, um, I know quite a few people enjoy playing tennis. We've got Wimbledon at the moment, haven't we? So tennis, again, that's going to give you um, lots of strength work on that, lots of balance, lots of agility. You're going to increase your heart rate. So, you know, maybe if, if your thing is, is playing tennis, then getting out there and playing tennis a couple of times a week are going to take off a lot of that prescription for you. The other thing is football, you know, look at, we've got the Euros on at the moment. I know the walking football um, has gone crazy, Parkinson's walking football, and they were on the BBC this this week um, talking about that, the benefits of walking football. Again, you're getting some heart rate elevation there. You're also, what's important with sport is you're getting that sense of community. And I think that's really key when we're exercising for Parkinson's. It's finding your people, connecting with people with like these guys here that have this condition can share with each other about you know I, I I'm an expert mm -hmm. from from reading about Parkinson's but I don't live with it um so I will never be an expert like like um Rose and like Jagdeep and like Vicky are um so I think connecting with people that are on that journey together and um understand what it's like to be able to, to have to get up every morning and exercise i think that's really key and sport can give you that too so it's really so sport can be yeah um a really good way of of ticking off that exercise prescription fantastic maria thank you that's actually i'm just going to carry that that theme on around about the the social element and that community element and just ask um the panelists what what have they got out of being a part of the community um, that they didn't realise that they would get before before joining that from the point of diagnosis and then, then joining within um, kind of Parkinson-specific classes or maybe not Parkinson-specific? Uh, Rose, please. Um, yeah, yeah. I, um, you would think it was, um, I moved from London to Scotland and you think I'd, I'd lose all the connections. Uh, I found more connections in the local village than, I've, than ever before. Um Onto the exercise and using your heart, improving your heart rate. I do Nordic walking, you know, with the sticks, and that really sort of gets your heart pumping. You know, if you if you do it correctly, there is a an an expert way to do it, and um, I found that very interesting. And then it's also um, meeting people from the village and going on different walks in my locality. You know, that's brilliant. And um, tap dancing, um, I do uh, tap dancing locally. Um, not at the Parkinson's ones, but uh. It's uh, energetic and uh, you use your mind, use your brain. You're exhausted by the end of it, trying to think of the steps. And um, then there's also a dance for Parkinson's, my local dance for Parkinson's group, which I'm meeting then local people with Parkinson's. And uh, that really gives you a boost because you can see how people are getting on. So I think definitely the social aspect is very important. And because like you were saying before, Maria, if Parkinson's makes you want to go in and it's not only your, your muscles, it makes you know your your temperament you know uh, want to go in and not speak and not see anybody so get out there and sort of see a local people and it's surprising how you know many people are interested um i did a coffee morning there and most people that came hadn't got parkinson's but they had they knew somebody with parkinson's or they just wanted to know about it and i think that's key you know be, be open about it you know fantastic thank you vicky have you got anything you'd like to add no i mean it we, I guess uh, this evening we're, we're not sure of the age group that are joining us and the only thing I'd like to add to that is obviously we're, we're a lot of the people that I'm dealing with are, are, are diagnosed earlier so they've got you know young onset Parkinson's so they may be having young families uh, so they are still working they've got young families they're trying to fit in the exercise with all of those additional pressures as well on top of that, many are leading into on the female side of things, uh, the menopause and, and, and things like that. So um, it, it throws up different issues depending on what age you are. So you may not be able to join in as many classes because you're just, you know, having to go out to work. But um, the only thing I would say is that um, there are lots of online um, classes available with, for example, Parkinson's UK with maria you know um and um ev everything that, that that you supply you've got a whole host of online classes as well so if 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 time is difficult then before or after work there are things available you know as, as well 
Yeah, prior to that, there's lots of, lots of online exercise provision. You're, I'm going to mention your heroes because they'll be upset if I don't mention them. And Rose is like, oh, God, please mention no, them. No, no, I'm sort of getting there. And, and there are many, many more out there too. Um, and I'm just going to add to that that um, that's the one thing with exercising online because we talk about community and I, and I always say community is really important and I to anyone who's been diagnosed. But I have to say there are people who exercise with us who are not ready to share yet that they have Parkinson's and are, are maybe working or, or for whatever reason they just and sometimes we're the only people that know they have Parkinson's not even some of the family know that they have Parkinson's but and I think that's sometimes where online exercise can be of great benefit because they know that they can come or they know they can access exercise that is Parkinson's specific that that will and they can get the advice that they need without having to go to a physical community because they're just not ready for that yet. Um, my hope is always that they will reach that time where they can join a, a local community because I 100% believe the benefits far outweigh um, hiding, like, like Rose said, hiding away and going in on yourself is the worst thing you can do. But um, exercising online does give them access to exercise um, and to experts if they just don't feel that's that's they're ready for that just yet. Fantastic. Yep. Always something for everybody. Not everybody likes to go out and about. Do they? They like that online kind of side of things. Uh, Jack Deep. Yes, please. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add um, to that. I think there's recent, um, I think, of course, there's good to have elements for everybody, whether you can get out of home or not. Um, but there's definitely recent research um, that's showing that um, social interaction is playing really good mental uh, well-being and exercise. You can't do one without the other. So you've got to have a good mental state to do ex exercise. And um, I always express to everybody in the class, I say this, when you come in, you're chatting to each other and you're going for a coffee afterwards, is just as important as the exercise because you're making new friends, you're uh, talking about different things, and at the same time, you're exercising. But I don't allow them to chit chat during the one hour class because I tell them that one hour has got to be solid exercise, nothing else. So there you go. That's my piece. <laughs> oh, Jack Deep says Taskmaster, I'll get you going. Your classes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we're just going to move on to the next question now. Thank you very much. That That's absolutely just invaluable advice, guys. Um, Vicky, so we touched on before um, with Maria when she was talking about um, kind of the different elements and the principles of fitness that we talk about within um, Parkinson's. Um, we know obviously that strength is one of your four is. So just wondering to know about kind of it. We've mentioned that it's good for Parkinson's, but kind of just a little bit more advice on on how someone could get started or what what you find has worked for the people that you're working with um yeah so just a little bit more information around that resistance and, and weight training yeah I think it's the hot topic at the moment I mean everyone's talking about strength training but you know what what does that mean and as I've reiterated you know we, we could be dealing with people in their 30s 40s with parkinson's right up to their 80s so there, there's a massive you know di difference in in the strength training but the stronger you are at any age gives you the ability to stay mobile and, and live for longer so um having parkinson's um you know you want to stay strong so you can cope with the everyday tasks so be it you know just bending down to get something out of the cupboard or if you're younger playing with your children or getting up from a chair if you're in your latter years so it's really important to keep strong I like to um to sort of uh, show it like a, a bottle of wine you're going over to a friend's house you've got a bottle of wine in the car if you let that bottle of wine just roll around, you know, the chances are it might break. But if you've got it padded up in something, then, you know, it's going to survive that journey. And it's the same with our bodies. You know, we, we, we have got our skeletons. And if we can build some muscle around our skeletons, we're going to stand taller. 
we're gonna it's gonna uh, uh, help with our balance which is a massive issue with parkinson's particularly in our later years you know our balance can go and falling you know i've had experience with my mother and grandmother with parkinson's that falling is is a massive issue and um if we've got some strength around our bodies and uh in the eventuality that that we might fall we're going to prevent those fractures prevent those breaks you know by having that that strong body but this isn't to say to everyone out there that you need to go and get some barbells and go to a gym and think that you've got to lift some heavy weights it's, it's completely the opposite at all you don't need to you can gain strength just through your body weight um just through doing you know for example with your with your legs just squatting down so you might be sitting on a chair stand up sit down stand up sit down do that a, a, a few times that's going to build muscle in your legs in your arms you might be able to grab a couple of cans from the cupboard or just fill a couple of water bottles three quarters full to, to get some weights and do some arm exercises. Um, so there's 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 lots of things you can do, and it's not as daunting as you think it's going to do. It's going to be, um, but it it is incredibly important for longevity. Um, and again, Maria, um, she's got some excellent uh, classes available Parkinson's UK uh, uh, and I'm sure all of us can can add to this conversation fantastic yes um also as well as I just wanted to mention because you, you a great analogy there um Vicky about kind of providing that that pattern but also as well as that that quality of life um Maria I don't know if you'd like that just because I was just thinking there around other long-term health conditions because there are people who are living with multiple long-term health conditions but also trying to get these this level of activity could actually prevent you developing other long-term health conditions and I'm sure that's a huge thing hugely and you know when we talk about strength training osteopenia so you know this um, and and that feeds into what you were just saying, Vicky, about um, menopausal age. You know, we know as we get older, our bones get weaker, and we're more at risk of developing osteoarthritis and and and, and thinning of our bones. Then strengthening is really important as as part of that. But also the aerobic side of things, we're looking at, you know, improving our cardiovascular fitness. So you know, that's going to reduce our risk of um, heart attacks is going to reduce our risk of stroke. Um, so so the exercise the exercise you do for your Parkinson's is going to help so many other potential long-term health conditions. Having long-term health conditions can be a challenge to exercising at the intensity that you need to do for, for your Parkinson's too because that's the other way of looking at it. You know, if you're waiting for a knee replacement or you're waiting for a hip replacement and you're thinking, and, and if you're waiting at the moment, you may be waiting some time, um, and you think that that's gonna be a real challenge, um, then it's about adapting the exercise. And again, going back to understanding the principles of Parkinson's specific exercise. So understanding those elements, power, accuracy, and amplitude, understanding about, um, moving with what we call energetic demand so it, there's that fine balance between cognitively loading a task so making it challenging to you making it novel a novel um task that you've never done before or or an, a new class you know making sure that it is challenging your brain but at the same time also looking at the aerobic intensity but but knowing that you can you can layer that and you can as as Vicky said, you can work from sitting and you can work really hard from a, from a chair. You know, you can still get those benefits from, from exercise, but it's understanding the principles and then applying it to whatever you want to do. Um, and I think that's really key. Um, and and applying it to, to your to your circumstance and, and to other ailments that you that you may have, taking into consideration those two. Um, but knowing that it's all going to be of benefit. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, this is kind of one that I'm just going to open up to the room. So we'll, we'll go around. And it's just we've talked about the fact of that, um, you know, 
all activities are really good. You do have that targeted work that we should be thinking about. But just to give kind of everybody who's joined here, just an idea of, of the breadth of what we all, we all do in the room, um, just to let people know that, you know, what activities we do and and the benefits that you feel from that. Like we've talked about the physical benefits, we've talked on the social benefits. So if there's just anything else you'd like to add. Um, so Jag, would you like to just share kind of what your kind of active week looks like and, and what you do? Sure. Um, so I have a, like a sort of a timetable of um, workouts and um, I do, um, it's like, to me, it's like a, a lifestyle change now. It's a, like a part of my high, high gene and something that I have to do every day. Um, obviously, if Parkinson's permits, but if it don't, I'm still trying to push myself because I don't want Parkinson's to win. Um, so um, I would do anything from a circuit training. Um, that could in include um, um, resistance training and stretching, running, cycling, boxing, um, just whatever hockey, I think teach hockey, film the hockey, so I play um, field the hockey as well. So I just do anything that um, gets me out there. Trying to, I never used to be a group person exerciser, but I'm finding exercising in groups is a lot more fulfilling for me now. And um, uh, definitely to see other people and teach other people at the same time, it gives me that extra sort of uh, oomph. Yeah, just variation, keep variation like it. You're in them this forum the long term, it isn't a short term thing. So, variation, variation, put yourself around people that will get you to exercise. Cool. Fantastic. And um, with the amount that Jag Deep does, he's got me feeling very tired and also <laughs> thinking I need to go out and do more. Um, so, Rose, uh, could you tell us as well? And um, I don't know, is it is the amount that you do now, is that where you started or did you start off and did you build up to kind of your activity level? Um, it's not a competition for, uh, you know, um, I, I didn't, I, I was, before uh, I was diagnosed eight years ago, um, I was just like a, a dance class here and a yoga class there, you know, I was, I was never into high octane uh, exercise, but um, I joined um, the Neuro Heroes, uh, which is the online uh, on Zoom uh, run neurophysio uh, led uh, classes. And I do three of those a week, um, three one hour sessions. And they include in either functional strength, power, um, sort of serpent training. And um, I mean, I wouldn't have thought I was I would do them in a, in a month of Sundays, but it's made me I'm fitter than I've, I've ever been. Then I just um, I found tap dancing classes because I used to do them as a kid. Thought I was brilliant, but wasn't. But I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I, I, all jazz hands. And um, the Nordic walking just happened. So I've sort of increased my my um, workload as it is. But I think, um, like Jack Deep said, it's for the long haul, but it's also a 24 hour, you know, uh, job, you know, living with Parkinson's if you want to stay fit. I also want to mention, um, yeah, obviously the group um, thing, but if you think of uh, Parkinson's from the top to, the, you know, to your toes, I also think about swallowing and you're, you're, you're using your muscle. So I joined a choir. And I find um, my speech is be probably not better today, but it's, 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 my speech is a lot better and louder. And um, so that helps. Um, functional exercise in, the, in the, the house, stretching that extra stretch, walking that extra step. I mean, you, know, you have to think about better. Every movement you make, you have to really think about Parkinson's and improving it. That's what I feel. You're kind of you know chasing it, you know. Fab. Thank you. And Vicky, please. Yeah, I mean... Oh, it's so lovely to hear from Jack Deep and, and Rose. And I've seen Rose doing these challenges online now and she's skipping. And, you know, it's it's such a difficult thing, isn't it? Because you've got this diagnosis and it's how do you flip it into a, we've got this one life, guys. We've, we've somehow got to make the most of it. And it's we still have a long life ahead of us. And it's finding your thing, I think. Um, I think for me personally, I love nothing more. I've got two dogs than getting out in nature and taking my dogs for a walk and uh, building up the aerobic from that maybe taking it slowly and then building up a little bit, maybe taking that hill, 
you know, that you don't want to take just to, to get that um, heart going, maybe putting some good music on to get the beat going. I also, um, I was at the uh, Parkinson's conference in Barcelona and um, wonderful chap there who does the laughing yoga suggested taking a Swiss ball in your hand. Uh, mine's on my left side, my Parkinson's, so to hold it in your left hand and it will help with the swing. So it's, it's little things like that, but also... I think Rose and Jack D said a really important thing, and I would reiterate that is the community thing um, that I teach. So during during a week, I'm teaching a lot of classes, but it's the laughter you can have in those classes when you get the exercises wrong, and you know it's just it it's just making making fun of it or not taking it too seriously, and just just doing what what you enjoy. I think. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes, that's that's definitely a takeaway message from from today is do what you enjoy and, and, and uh, something is, is is better than nothing and do as much as you can on the day, on any day. Um, just on that, because obviously we have been talking about this and we've, we've mentioned the word daunting and and how and the fact that motivation is a real issue when it when it comes to living with Parkinson's. Um, and so we just kind of again wanting to go around the room about your your hints and tips and your little tricks that you might do that make sure that on that day that you get up and you do it um and just some little ways of of developing that habit um you know we, we'll ask about your guys and i think maria will come to you about how you and the, some of the things that you advise the people that you work with to how to do it but i think on that that day when you're not feeling good um what do you guys do jagdeep vicky rose what 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 is it that you do to make sure you know like is it getting that kit out the night before so when you see it you're thinking yep i've got to get that on things like that so uh jagdeep please we'll start with you yeah i think um part of my group session that i do i think that gives me a lot of kick um, um, I just give you a pure example. I've got a 81 year old um, last Friday. He came to the class and he just had a cataract operation. And then I said to him, "What are you doing here?" Because he goes, "This is my highlight of the week. I can't miss this." So mm -hmm. I just got him to sat there and sat down on the chair and just doing a couple of bits, but. But the fact that somebody that age, and um, he's just had a cataract, he said, I've got two of his stitches in my eye, and he's not an exerciser, but cause he just wanted to come. He, he, he's like, things like that give me the kick and gives me the impetus. I think exercising for me is like a way of life anyway. So for me to get that sort of extra sort of kick from the group, helps me a lot sort of thing so that's what i would say gives me a real kick up the backside so we're going to get out an extra class yeah. <laughs> fantastic yeah having somebody or a group like you say the community or if you're not really into that group thing sometimes just having that that buddy that someone to answer to can be that that real motivator to make sure that you're uh, you don't shy away uh vicky please yeah i i i mean it's that's so lovely, Jack D. Really lovely to hear and very heartwarming. Um, I I would add to that that maybe diarising, um, having a schedule so that you know that that day at that time you're going to be exercising. And believe you me, as I said in the past, I will wake up, I will not go, yay, I will go, oh, how am I going to do this? Oh, dear, I've got to do this class and I'm so tired and oh. But I know I've got to do it. And then I do do it. And I'm so glad I've done it. And it makes me feel so much better and happier and all the rest of it. So sometimes if you've got it diarised, working around your day, it will just give you that push to, um, to get it done, I think. Fantastic. Thank you, Vicky. And Rose, please. Um... Well, I'm not known for my timekeeping, so um, sometimes when I have an online class in the morning, I could be five minutes late and they know it. It's, I'm not proud, but um, I, I don't like to let them down. So even if I am late, I can't, I can't, I can't just go, oh, I'm late, I won't, I won't go. I will go because I, I don't want to let them down. And they you know, give me a hard time when I, I get on and that's for fun. But um, also, I think I've got, you know, I've got, well, young men, my three boys are grown up now. I want to show them that, you know, uh, 
you, you get a bad day, you just carry on, you know. And like you say, Vicky, it does get better. So you might wake up in a bad mood and then you think, OK, I'm going to you know, pretend I'm OK. And then it kind of it does get better and I keep on pushing. But uh, yeah, probably my kids are my biggest inspiration. Fantastic. Thank you. And Maria, is there any advice that you give to the people that you work with? Yeah, um, I think the first thing to say is that there is a chemical reason why you don't feel motivated to do to do to exercise when you have parkinson's you haven't had some sort of you're not lazy and you haven't had some sort of personality transplant since diagnosis um dopamine is the um chemical that you lack as a result of having parkinson's and dopamine is a neurotransmitter it's used to take the signals from our brain to our muscles and that's why parkinson's is a movement disorder but also dopamine has another role. It's a role in, it is released in abundance when we achieve. So when we exercise and we do a good job, we get a, a huge release of dopamine in our bodies. You don't have that. So you lack the internal motivation um, and there is a chemical reason for that. So all those things that you guys have been speaking about are external ways of motivating yourself. And you've worked that out. Um, and that's why it's so important when you have Parkinson's that you have external motivation because you don't have the internal drive that we have. And we still find it difficult, don't we, Anna? <laughs> Even with the <laughs> internal drive intact. So exercising is difficult and, and exercise habits is difficult. So accountability, you've spoken about, you know, being accountable to other people, your group, your exercise person, your physio, your PT, whoever is leading that group, um, your family, having that accountability, that works. Scheduling, Vicky, you've spoken about that. So, so important. Ring, ring fencing that time, knowing that you're going to exercise. That's really, really key. Making sure that everybody else knows that you're, that's your exercise time and nobody else is to disturb you whilst you're exercising. You know, make sure that everybody knows about that. Um, Community, we've spoken about lots. It's so important to feel connected and, and to, to be on a journey with people. It will help you form that habit. Um, and reward. You all need to reward yourselves when you achieve because you're just doing such a fantastic job. So whether that is, you know, having that cup of coffee after you've finished your exercise class, just like Jagdeep was saying, you know, whether that is having that extra long shower because you're, you've achieved that or whether that's, you know, ticking off your schedule, getting to the end of the week and saying, do you know what? I've done so good this week. I'm just going to have a little glass of wine to celebrate, you know, whatever it floats your boat, reward yourself for your achievements because you, you're all brilliant and you're, it's amazing that you do this because as I said, you're lacking that internal motivational drive. So, um, you know, Hats off to you guys for doing what you do every single day. You're amazing. Fantastic. And um, I, I've realised we, we are coming to, to towards the end now. Um, so I'm just going to ask one more question from what was previously sent in. And then if we have time, one from the question and answer panel that people have submitted tonight. But as we've said, um, we will follow up with these questions and they will, will be sent out. So we will we'll answer those questions on there. Um, and this is the biggie, Maria. It's coming your way. Um, so we've heard a lot about why we exercise, what, what it does. And the big question is, because it is something that we, we hear, is can exercise slow the progression of Parkinson's? Right. So um, the evidence is out at the moment of this. We, we know there is plenty of evidence to show us that exercising improves motor symptoms. Um, and makes you have better control of your motor symptoms. Um, slowing progression is the submerging evidence. Um, the main, the most current recent study um, that has been published is a study by um, Baz Bloom, who is a neurologist based in the Netherlands and his team out there. And they've done a park in, what they call the park in shape study. And in that they exercise people, they split them into two groups and they exercise them um, hard at, at vigorous intensity, at high intensity for 30 minutes, five times a week, um, three times a week, sorry, three times a week. They, uh, and then they also had a control group, which were just stretching. 
Um, and they um, found, as I said, that motor symptoms improved over a six month period. But then they took a small group of these, of these participants and they scanned their brains. And this is the first time that we've started to look at what's actually structurally happening in the brain as a result of exercising. And what they found was in the exercise group that um, brain atrophy, so shrinking of brain occurs. And shrinking of a brain occurs naturally as we age. But shrinking of brain, they looked at just over that six month period and they found that the ones that were just doing the stretching still had some shrinkage of brain, but the actual ones in the exercise group, their brain remained the same size. Plus, they also noted that the chain, so the basal ganglia is the area in the brain that controls movement. It's that area deep inside our brain. It's the area of the brain that's affected when you have Parkinson's. And what they saw was in the exercise group, the connections between the basal ganglia and the motor cortex um, part, part of the brain um, had improved as a result of exercising. So this is the first time we've ever seen some structural evidence of change, actual physical change in the brain as you exercise. But it's just one small study. So we need more evidence. Um, but early signs show um, that, yeah, there is some merging evidence, but we need more. That is yeah, so we, we don't quite make that declaration just yet, but we hope um, that, yeah, that research is coming and that we'll be able to do that. But if not, it's one of those things of what we've talked about. It's about that quality of life and what what it does anyway, just for your day to day. And it does help with that, that control of, of um, motor symptoms. Um, I'm just going to quickly dive in. So sorry, I'm literally just popping up the question and answer. I'm going to pick one. So I'm sorry if I don't get around to your question, um, but we will kind of um do that so um yeah i think this is actually a, a, a very good question actually it's about perception of, of of going to to certain classes so um this person was told not to go to an organized class in my town for people with parkinson's as i had mild symptoms and may be put off by some of those with severe symptoms um do you agree um but also can we just give a, a you know a little bit of advice a, a, around that um, with regards to um, maybe finding other exercise um, or other sessions within the community that would be beneficial, it may not be Parkinson's um, specific. So, Marie, I'm going to start with you on that one as well, because I, I think that's that. And then the other guys can give their perception about what they felt about going to a Parkinson's exercise class. Yeah, I think what's really key, uh, you know, we we're on a mission, um, Sally and myself at Richard Peak, and, and so are the other physios that I work with in the Excellence Network Exercise Hub at, you know, making sure that every single person with Parkinson's is diagnosed and becomes an expert at exercising for their Parkinson's. Because I think if you really understand what's happening in your brain, if you understand why you have to exercise and if you understand your prescription and, and how to make exercise Parkinson's specific, then you can take that knowledge and apply it to anything that you do. Um, and I think that's really key. Also, what's also really important is that we have the exercise professionals out there who can support people to be able to exercise. So it becomes a choice. If you want to exercise in a class that is Parkinson's um, specific and you want to exercise with people, then that's absolutely fine. That, you know, that's great. But if you don't want to do that, what I would love to, to and what we aim for is that wherever you go we can find people you'll find people who understand your condition and they'll be able to support you to do whatever exercise or sport you want to do um whether that being as i said in a parkinson specific group or whether that is just in a generic exercise group um yeah I think fantastic that's... thank you yeah so we'll just get um your guys opinion you know you're living with a condition what was your thoughts um obviously i know you've mentioned now that you are doing um parkinson specific classes but just before that how did you feel about that but then actually what did you find when you went um and we are going to have to be very quick i'm afraid because we have overrun um so rose please um yeah the uh, exact same thing happened to me i'll go be quick um when i was first diagnosed i saw there was a dance for parkinson's class in the town and i ran off to it and i joined and i was going to be all open about things and well, these, a lot of these people were further advanced than me, so I was shocked. Um, so I ran home and I said, um, you know, I'm not going again. But I think if you turn it on its tail, you know, turn it upside down, 
these people are 10 years in and they're still going out to classes. So, you know, they were like you once. But having said that, if you join um, a local group, um, I find that if you tell them that you have Parkinson's, even though it's not a Parkinson's specific group, um, I found like my Nordic walking uh, leader, she, she's looked into Parkinson's and she talks to me about it. So it's it, they will be, you know, aware of your symptoms and um, most people want to learn about it. So uh, I think if you join a, a group, uh, a generic group, tell them you have Parkinson's and I will, you will find that they will help you along. Fantastic. Thank you. Jack D, please. Just, um, yeah, the flip side of that, obviously, um, I teach a group session. So I've had um, young people come in that don't actually want to be in the class. So I actually stay in contact with them and tell them the exercises to do. But um, most parkies that I find, they find exercising amongst other parkies a lot more easier because if you've got somebody in a generic class and is trembling or this kinetic, it makes them sometimes feel out of place. But um, yeah, so it's whatever fits anybody. There's always options and there's plenty of options out there. I tend to tell people, look, stay in touch and I can tell you exercises that you can do at home. Yeah, cool. Fab. And Vicky, please. Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> the question from the start is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, probably directed at a younger person. Um, because they're they're suggesting don't go to a Parkinson's class because it will make you, you know, a, as Rose says, a bit daunted. Um, for me personally, I wouldn't want to join a, a a class with older older people. And like Rose says, I think that um, more um, fitness instructors and professionals at gyms or classes should. Um, and if they're not, then they're, they're not professionals. They, you should be able to go to them and say, look, I've got Parkinson's and they should be able to do exercises appropriate for you, be it that you're in a general class. So I think it's a very individual thing. Some people may like to be in a general Parkinson's class. I think it's very age dependent as well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's one of those that... We can answer that question as we've just tried, but it definitely comes down to personal preference at the end of the day. It's what you feel comfortable with and, and what you want to want to do. Um, so, yes, I'd just like to say that, like, thank you very much um, for that. I'm going to do a little bit of a plug now because there's some questions there about kind of signposting and, and, and work and things like that. So just a little bit about what Parkinson's UK are doing at the moment um, with regards to trying to, to kind of mobilise the world of physical activity for people with Parkinson's is that we do do a lot of work around that awareness and education for both healthcare professionals and obviously with um, the newly diagnosed um, side of, of the organisation through Linny and, and Brooke, who's on the call today, and having talks like this so we can try and, and um, educate people on what, what you should be doing. We've heard the word dose. We've even heard the word cocktails. So I'm loving all the analogies <laughs> are in here. So it's fabulous. So, you know, we, we do that. We're working on that. And we are working with healthcare professionals. So in the hope that you will you, and you can go to a local leisure centre and and the instructors in there will know about Parkinson's. There are courses out there that they can do. But, you know, we try and give that little bit more in depth of, of that education. We also work with national governing bodies and other sports people. So we try to get grassroots sports as well. So that leisure centre might not be attractive to you, attractive to you, but you want to go back and you want to try walking football or you want to go back and do tennis or, you know, you want to continue. We're working with club coaches to educate them also um, on how to be inclusive, whether that's Parkinson's friendly or Parkinson's specific classes. Um, we've got lots of online resources. We've got on-demand exercise content that everybody on this screen has been a part of um, and done some fantastic work so we've got those that it's something you can try try before you buy I like to say so you can have a go at that and see what you would like and then you can go and and out in the community and find what you want to do or maybe you just stay and you continue with those so there's lots of resources um, on our website. Have a look at that. Um, you've heard a lot of names here today. So for instance, Richard Peak. we've heard Neuro Heroes, we've got Vicky, we've got Jagdeep. So, you know, there's a, a whole host of things that are going on out there in the community, in real life, in person, and also online that you can access. Um, and we'll do some signposting after this. But we've also got a lookup tool 
on our website as well that you can find a lot of activities on there to postcode and it pulls up what, what's in and around in and around you um so yeah just you know we're, we're here to help um we'll send out some um some key resources that we think that you could try and tap into if you wish um and and from that and we'll also send out some answers answers to the questions that we haven't managed to um answer tonight but um i'd just like to say thank you to rose maria jagdeep and vicky uh for for coming along tonight um i found that really informative and really inspiring i hope you guys did as well um and yeah that you know that we've answered a lot of those questions that you had um so thank you very much everybody Thank you. Thank you.